More than 3,000 years ago, the Maya culture emerged in Central America. Their civilization stretched from the Yucatan Peninsula and what is now southern Mexico, south to Guatemala and Honduras, and spanned the region from coast to coast. As the Maya flourished, they built monumental structures, established cities, formulated a writing system, and created a complex religion, cosmic mythology, and an extravagant array of gods. Around 900 AD, for reasons still only partially understood, many of the largest Maya cities were abandoned. The people dispersed, and parts of their culture faded and were forgotten. In many places, their ruined buildings, mysterious icons, and fragmented artifacts were all that remained. The recovery of the Maya legacy has attracted archaeologists for more than a hundred years. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the Free Museum of Science and Art, known today as the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology, has been involved in that quest. Among its collection of objects from one part of the Maya world, the Alta Vera Paz in Guatemala, is a collection of unusual polychrome vessels. Their painted scenes hold clues to key pieces of Maya history and mythology and are an important part of the archaeological record. This is the story of the project to preserve this extremely valuable and very fragile part of the Maya legacy. This fragmentary record, found in tombs and in the ruins of ancient buildings, had been conserved using the best techniques and materials of the 1920s. By the end of the 20th century, their condition had deteriorated dangerously. Through the generosity of the Getty Foundation Trust, this collection has been conserved using contemporary techniques and materials that for some of them replaced the original conservation done in the field. The conservation was conducted by conservator Lynn Grant, a specialist in archaeological artifacts. Treating these ancient ceramics is an extremely delicate process because they're quite fragile and susceptible to damage by the most minor adverse conditions. And because these vessels are so rare and important, they should not be exposed to any risk. The first steps of the process are thorough examination and documentation of the pieces. This is an opportunity to identify conditions that need rectifying. One tool that's used is a black light. The ultraviolet light shows where the original surface has been coated with varnishes in modern times. Lynn may need to employ special measures to reverse this possibly damaging treatment. Another element of the documentation and examination process was a multispectral imaging analysis performed by Dr. Jean Ware of Brigham Young University who pioneered the application of this method of analyzing archaeological artifacts. He uses a highly sensitive digital camera with a filter wheel that can be adjusted to capture specific wavelengths of light across a broad spectrum. Each recorded wavelength may reveal details on the vessels that are not visible to the naked eye. Also at this early point in the conservation process, Lynn extracts samples of residue from inside some of the vessels to determine if any of them may have contained a favorite Maya treat, chocolate. And as a subsequent analysis by Dr. W. Jeffrey Hurst, senior scientist of Hershey Technical Center reveals, two of them did. This bit of evidence confirms that the people of this region who created these treasures also cultivated and or traded the highly coveted commodity. During the documentation process, digital photographs of all angles of the containers are taken as a special reference measure. These will serve as a record of the vessel's condition prior to their conservation. The images will be of great assistance later in the process because the next step involves disassembling and rebuilding these ceramics. Another useful resource that assists in the reconstruction of the pots is the collection of watercolors of them created when they first arrived at the museum. These watercolors are invaluable as a record of how the ceramics looked at their earliest off-site documentation. Done in an era before color photography was perfected, they capture the most minute details down to the cracks and chips that remained after they were first reassembled. 
The first physical step in their conservation requires that they be completely dismantled so that older failing restoration materials can be replaced with newer materials which will better preserve them and enable them to go on exhibit one day. The procedure is very simple. In most cases, Lynn uses acetone as a solvent. She places jars of it in this chamber. Then she lays down cushioning material and finally places the vessel to be taken apart inside. The chamber is then sealed for 24 hours. When it is reopened, the acetone vapors have softened the glue and the fragments have begun to separate. Now it's just a matter of teasing the fragments apart with a little coaxing. After the fragments have all been separated, Lynn meticulously cleans each one. She uses a scalpel to remove the residue of old glue along the edges. Then she uses cotton swabs and a cleaning solution on the surfaces of the fragments to remove accumulated grime, restoring the original colors and luster. Once the cleaning is finished, all the fragments of a pot are laid out flat like jigsaw puzzle pieces. For each pot, the mending process is a game of matching the right pieces. What assists greatly in doing this is something called a rollout. It is a flat rendering of the entire surface of the disassembled pot. Rollouts from both the watercolors and digital photographs are available to help show how the matching fragments go together. As Lynn puts the pots back together, she uses newer, more stable adhesive which will support the fragments much better than the old adhesive and will stay stable over many decades. She then places the joined fragments in a sandbox to set. The next step in the reconstruction process is to fill in any remaining gaps, which makes the vessels sturdier than they had been at the outset. In order to do this, Lynn uses a piece of plasticine, a type of modeling clay that can be molded to follow a pot's contours. Once a piece is firmly in place over a gap, she then fills the space in with a quick setting plaster. Once dry, the excess plaster is scraped away. Now the plasticine is removed, and the pot has a strong seamless patch that holds fast all the fragments around the former hole. With the restoration complete for all of these priceless artifacts, a piece of Maya history is preserved for future study and a few more clues are available to help in the pursuit of the mysteries of the Maya. The expert craftsmanship of these pieces, the characters whose stories they reveal, and the legacy of the Maya they convey will all endure as pieces of the ever-growing store of knowledge about the once unknown civilization of the Maya. It is a contribution to a body of knowledge that is ever-increasing thanks to the dedication of researchers, both past and present, who continue to add to our knowledge of this great culture.